What does mission look like um, in a world where those of us who are white don't want to extend the colonial project, but mm -hmm. we do believe that there's a, it's good for all people to come to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and since I'm a missiologist, I think I actually am prepared to answer that one. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, so I, I have, uh, and I don't have them with me, I don't have them by memory, but I have these, uh, you know, Dr. Woodley's 10 missiological imperatives. And uh, they go something like this, um, uh, that there's nowhere you can go where Jesus isn't already active in calling people to himself. Secondly, um, that uh, our job is first to observe where Jesus is active, and whether it's your next door neighbor or someone across the waters, it doesn't matter. Where is Jesus active? If you believe the first, then you have to observe the second. Um, thirdly would be um, uh, that, uh, I don't remember the order now, I'm, I'm getting mixed up, but um, the first thing would be once you find out where Jesus is active, then to convert to that in that culture, because our job as humble servants of Christ is to first convert to their truth, not to expect them to convert to ours. And to understand that God expects two conversions out of every process. And, and when I'm saying conversion, it's little c. Like uh, I, I look at uh, salvation to me, a better um, a word that captures salvation is healing. And uh, healing is a process. Um, we, we begin our healing, and we complete our healing, but we're also being healed. So um, as Paul said, you know, um, now we're we much closer now to our own salvation or healing than when we first began. Um, so, uh, and then uh, part of that is decolonizing our own thinking. Um, and then as much as possible through the help of cultural guides, indigenizing ourselves to that culture. And then uh, at the proper time, uh, when given permission, then it's time to share our truth. And that's sort of how I understand mission and evangelism, so to speak.